Our next speaker for today is Kuba Sendor. I hope I pronounced that right. All right, yeah. great. Um, he's known for his work at Yelp, and today he'll talk about OSX Collector, Collector which is an intruder-based tool, an incident response tool for OSX. Thank you. Hello. So, uh, yeah, let's start. So, uh, who am I at the very beginning? Uh, I joined the Yelp security team uh, about a year ago in July. Uh, before that, I was working uh, at SAP in South Antipolis in France for about three and a half years. Uh, at Yelp, I'm mostly involved in malware incident response, also working on automating our uh, security processes. Uh, and a part of that is, for, uh, for instance, the OSX Collector project. Uh, I was studying at AGH University uh, of Science and Technology in Krakow and also doing double diploma program with the university in uh, France, Paritech, Institute Recom. So maybe for those of you who don't know much about Yelp, uh, Yelp is uh, a crowdsourced review website for local businesses. We also have uh, mobile applications. Uh, we also have, um, for instance, applications for table reservations and uh, food delivery. I realized actually just having a time slot just before lunch might be not a good thing to talk about Yelp because you're probably going to start like yelping your places where you want to uh, grab something to eat after the talk, but uh, bear with me. I hope I'm going to uh, fit into less than one hour. <laughs> so if you're not hungry enough, like you should probably manage. Um, so Yelp has around uh, 83 million uh, unique visitors on our mobile application. Uh, the same number actually of uh, reviews since the inception of the website of the of the website uh, 11 years ago. Uh, most of them are com coming now today from uh, mobile applications, around 68 percent, and we're in uh, 32 countries right now, uh, which adds up into around like more than 3,000 employees worldwide, uh, and most of them are using Macs. Uh, and you might realize that uh, MacBooks were deemed as a quite secure uh, laptops operating system, uh, Mac OS X. Uh, this is not longer the case. I guess this, they're kind of a victims of their own popularity because nowadays attackers, bad people, are uh, really also trying to uh, find some vulnerabilities and also attack uh, users of this operating system. So for instance, if you download anything like uh, uh, video converter for MacBook. Uh, this will usually come bundled with some sort of a malware in it. And for instance, all download.com, which is run by CNET, they used to uh, package malware. So first hint is like just block download.com. Don't allow your uh, corporate users to, to, to go visit this website. And our malware uh, incident response it used to look like that. Basically, whenever there was like some antivirus alert, uh, we just used to wipe the machine, don't do much with that. And this was sort of uh, not a very uh, advanced way of dealing with things. I mean, uh, we used to see the same infections all over again, and we, there was only so much we could do about it because there was no uh, existing tool that could help us with, with analyzing the infection. Mm, so that make most of our users really, really sad. Uh, and at the time, uh, we figured out like, hey, let's, let's do something about that. There, there are a couple of tools already um, open sourced doing similar stuff. For instance, OSX Auditor was a similar tool, but we also wanted uh, to add some, some more stuff about that. Uh, so we uh, open sourced OSX Collector, uh, which is malware uh, forensics uh, gathering tool for OS X. It is very easy to run, it's just one Python file. So basically, uh, whenever we found out there is like infected machine or in our network, we used to just uh, grab it off the network to stop any further proliferation. Uh, just get the script there, so with USB stick, maybe not very secure manner, but uh, it was already on the network, so we weren't so much scared about that. Uh, grab this file on the, on the machine, uh, run the script, uh, get the output, and uh, then do further analysis. Uh, what this Python uh, file is doing is basically is collecting all different system, uh, system diagnostic and, um, for instance, browser history, 
and putting it in a very uh, easy way to understand both for machine, so for automated analysis and for humans. Uh, so we, we uh, started doing this with uh, Jason. Let me just see a quick show of hands, how many of you are actually using MacBooks and uh, know a bit about like OS 10? Okay. So I'll try to maybe uh, do some also uh, way of connecting it with other operating systems like Windows. Uh, because, uh, you know, like for Windows, most of the system information is stored in the registry. Uh, similar uh, OS 10 stores uh, most of this information properties about system. Uh, either in SQLite uh, databases or uh, something they called PLists, property list. And uh, it's very easy to, for instance, dump uh, the content of SQLite database with, uh, with Python. It's just like around eight lines, I think, uh, this script. So this is one of the, uh, one of the things that Oracle is doing, just grabbing the system properties from uh, all different SQLite databases uh, on OS and system. Mm, also for property lists, some of them are either in like uh, something like binary format or plain text. Uh, it basically grabs from all the sources and uh, put them back into this concise form of, or of a JSON uh, entry. Uh, we used foundation library, which is sort of a nice way to wrap Objective-C calls. As you see from this slide, Objective-C kind of like very lengthy names, which is maybe not that very Pythonic way of doing things. So the code of OSX collector looks a bit weird, like sometimes we'll bump into this uh, quite lengthy names, but basically what they're doing is just like uh, using this foundation library to, to grab something like, for instance, plist content and um, convert it into, into a JSON format. But it's very easy with, with this foundation library and uh, foundation is found on all, all uh, lab, uh, machines running OS 10, so you don't really need any dependencies to run the script. So you just, as we are doing it, we just grab the uh, this one Python file on the machine and run it without any uh, need of installing anything else. Uh, this is a list of all different things that this tool is able to to collect from the operating system. So as I was saying, for instance, browser history, uh, kernel extensions. Uh, things that are running on a uh, startup of the system, uh, quarantines, uh, email info, which is mostly like attachments if people are using um, uh, the default email application for their, uh, for their emails. And also downloads from, from a downloads folder, which are uh, pretty much where most of the malware is coming from, yeah. So, uh, what OSX Collector produces is this sort of list of uh, JSON log entries. They all contain some common uh, keys, for instance, like path of the file from downloads uh, directory or, or kernel extension or, or the playlist that it was taken from. Uh, some hashes, timestamps, uh, signature chain, as you see on this uh, slide here, which can give us some, some more uh, indication during the uh, analysis process. If you have some malware or some, for instance, MD5 checks some suspicious on the startup items, uh, this is pretty much like indication that, yeah, let's wipe this machine. So we don't do uh, more than that here. Timestamps are quite important as well, we think. And uh, for that reason, what OSX Collector is doing is like unifying them all into this quite uh, simple format. Uh, which is maybe like easy to, to, to say now, but all different uh, applications, for instance, Firefox, Safari, they use different ways of uh, doing timestamps. Uh, OS X is using their own way, like I think milliseconds from 2001. Firefox is doing like seconds from Epoch and all these different ways of converting, uh, of, of basically recording timestamps. So as OS X Collector is just grabbing them all into this one uh, format, which is both human readable and machine readable for further analysis. Mm, hashes are, are still important, we believe, so it's basically dumping all different hashes of any file uh, that's uh, either like in downloads directory or applications directory. 
and this this may be still very useful for for the analysis if you see suspicious uh, file hash. I mean, this is clear indication something is going uh, going wrong there. Quarantines. Uh, for those of you who are not uh, Mac users, these are sort of these warnings where you downloaded something from the internet and you try to open it. Uh, your operating system will um, warn you about that. Obviously, nobody reads that. They just click open, open. Uh, most of the users at least do it. And uh, we still have indication of, of where the file came from because uh, this quarantines uh, are staying forever. They're recorded in this in this playlist, so oh, we can grab easily information where uh, the file was downloaded from and uh, when when did that happen? Uh, which agent name? So, for instance, here it was downloaded from Google Chrome. Um, was the uh, was the file downloaded from? So we can correlate all these different events. Uh, the other thing, pretty similar to. Um, quarantines is this uh, extend attribute where from. Uh, this is another thing very, uh, very nicely integrated into uh, OS X, which just gives you clear indication of where a file came from. Um, this is something you can just even invoke from the command line. Here we, we use some uh, library, uh, basically one of the foundation's library uh, calls uh, to grab the information where the file came from. Uh, why you see multiple URLs here is because it's even clever than uh, than some of the browsers. It's 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 not only containing like the uh, actually uh, download URL, but also refer, so it can give you an information also not only uh, where the file was directly downloaded from, but also the the, the website that the user got redirected to uh, redirected from to to open this this file. Mm. Signature chains, this is something that might come useful uh, during the analysis of the infection. Uh, surprisingly enough, OS X doesn't care that much about signature chain, but uh, so they don't display any warnings uh, and so forth when, when binaries are not signed, but this, uh, this can be quite useful during the, the analysis. So this is pretty much the part uh, what OSX collector can do, uh, how it is doing it, uh, but just grabbing all these different foreign things during the uh, post -inf uh, infection is, is okay. It's like sort of a not cool part. It's you just have to take your time. Grab you can do it all manually. You don't need the tool for that. It will just take you a lot of time. So uh, we automated that with this OSX collector script, but actually. Uh, you still will waste quite a lot of time just analyzing it because, for instance, for the machine that was running like a couple of months, uh, this file will have around like a uh, couple of megabytes. Uh, so you can imagine how many JSON entries uh, can fit into that. So, so just going through that, uh, it's not really uh, that much, um, I would say, fascinating. Uh, for someone who really wants to have like immediate uh, answers for for the question like hey uh, where this malware came from mm. so basically what we are doing mainly with this uh, output is for instance where uh, we have like incident timestamp either from like antivirus or any like fireeye uh, cipher sort of uh, boxes we can just clearly grab around this uh, you can easily pair up the output of SX collector with tools like JQ. This is sort of like a nice way to query uh, JSON and display it in a nice format. Mm. So, for instance, it can like display you uh, all the URLs uh, that the user visited, and if you like pair it with Grab, it can be like a oh, during this uh, time frame uh, the user visited all those different URLs. Uh, this can give you clear indication like where where the uh, bad thing came from. But it's like a lot of these entries, and if you try to like grab around this, you'll just clearly find out after like doing it for like half an hour, it's like way too, too much. So, yeah, I mean, it's quite repeated. Like every day, with just like thousands of incidents, you'll just like, oh yeah, let's grab around the timestamp, let's display URLs, let's try to figure out uh, the virus total or opinions, like, are those URLs bad or not? It's, it will just take 
hell of time, so we found like, hey, why don't we just automate that part as well? So we built a sort of a second uh, tool, uh, kind of a wrapper around the OSX collector that can grab the output of a tool, so all these different forensic entries, and just analyze them automatically. Uh, so, uh, for instance, it will go away with uh, directly looking at certain timestamps, uh, trying to correlate this with uh, URLs that this timestamps are um, connected to, try to grab some more in data about the uh, URLs from uh, pages like VirusTotal or uh, if you, you use open DNS investigate and try to enrich this uh, initial output with this information. Uh, we call them output filters because they sort of uh, go uh, around all these different uh, JSON output entries and try to enrich them, uh, sort of the way like filtering them around. Mm, this is kind of a chain uh, of all these different filters. You can uh, see here, uh, for instance, we start with just directly enriching the information uh, with finding all the domains related to a certain entry. Uh, so for instance, we have like long URL, uh, you will, uh, this, this filter will extract sort of uh, all different subdomains, domains from, uh, uh, from a URL. Um, the way it's, it's doing, it's very simple, it's basically just, uh, Oh, sorry. Uh, basically, tries to like uh, grab the one of the entries uh, in JSON uh, object and then like add some more information into it. So in that case, it will add this OS collector underscore domains with all the different domains that it extracted from the uh, from the URL. Here is a very very easy example because there is uh, there is not so much. Uh, apart from this initial domain, but for instance, if you hold up like a longer URL with also some other domains in the query parameters, it will also extract it from them. So for instance, if there was like a one URL containing its refer uh, or like return address in the query parameters, it will also extract it from there. Um, what we, we are doing with this uh, URLs domains, we can check them uh, around our internal blacklist. So, uh, this will give us some immediate information about like, hey, yeah, we've seen this um, URL domain in the past. We sort of highlighted this as a bad or, or good uh, because it, it can also check them against whitelist and um, already from that we can grab some first, let's say, um, indication whether this we, we've already seen similar incident or this is, is it something new that we should block. Uh, blacklist is sort of kind of clever way of doing it because uh, you can um, also have some regex around it uh, apart from uh, exact match. And if bl in internal blacklist is not enough, we can go search with virus total. Um, in this case, we can, for instance, grab a hashes and directly augment the output with uh, things that we found out from virus total API. Mm. What we were doing also, we put certain thresholds around these uh, values that we received. So, for instance, if we had like uh, three positive hits from virus total, we can say like, yeah, this is sort of suspicious. Mm. It's quite, let's say, uh, work in progress around like which thresholds are actually quite accurate. You might find that for for your purposes, you you should tune it a bit around different values. We could do also all lots of different data science stuff around the uh, uh, thresholds here because uh, like, okay, even some, uh, some URLs with just one find, if they're like very, very fresh, uh, they could be highlighted as a, as a suspicious. What is quite cool about the way we query virus total is that if you, if you don't have like the commercial license, which I believe allows you to do like around 25 calls per minute or more than that, uh, you can tune it uh, sort of call rate, um, so you can still have nice results with uh, with just like a typical open license for VirusLotter, which I think it's like only four calls per minute, something like that. Um, so yeah, if you have like thousand URLs, maybe it will uh, it won't really uh, be very uh, super fast. But we also um, use sort of caching mechanism, so once you 
query for the same URLs all over again, it will just grab the results from the cache rather than call it again. So it can also speed up the, the analysis a bit. Uh, apart from uh, VirusTotal, we also have uh, Shadow Server Hash Lookup, um, find related files filter, which sort of does similar thing that this find related uh, domains filter, which is just sort of like grabbing all different, uh, I would say, file patterns to search for. So just to grab like a correct file name that could indicate that something is suspicious. Like if you have uh, files that are like video converter or uh, downloader or something, this may already be quite a nice indication that this is something that you should look at the, in the first hand comparing to, to the other files that, that were found on disk. Mm. I was thinking also about the different APIs that we, we can call uh, OpenDNS related domains filters. One of them, uh, OpenDNS uh, provides around eight, nine different endpoints. One of them is, is this related domains. We find this one quite useful because uh, as, you, as you can see, like evil domains sort of sit next to each other. So if you have like related domains to a certain um, maybe not suspiciously sounding domain. Uh, maybe the related domains to that, the ones that are sitting on the same IP address, uh, they would be uh, more suspicious than this initial domain. Uh, another one from OpenDNS is also reputation uh, filter. This is what they call this like fredental, like as I said before, like it's sort of like a bunch of values. You you might feel need uh, to sort of tune them up for you. So uh, uh, one of them, for instance, like this uh, domain generation algorithm score. This could sort of indicate whether this domain was automatically generated. Um, in this case, if you look, I guess it's sounding not so much uh, randomly, but there are like all these different like domains that look like uh, random. Uh, strings of some numbers and uh, characters that could indicate that this domain was just like created for the sole purpose of uh, storing some sort of malware on it or like redirection for uh, from our source. And what this uh, what is let's say a very uh, at the very end of running all these filters is this kind of uh, recommendation part where based on all these different uh, augmented entries in the JSON log, we can suggest uh, certain actions as a, as a end result of the analysis. So you can see here uh, that uh, it found out some suspicious download uh, based on URLs uh, in where from's attributes, uh, some related file names and can suggest, for instance, yeah, let's go and block this domain. This is sort of like thing you should do. Um, this recommendation steps come sort of all after like running all these filters. Uh, you can run them separately. So for instance, if you don't have virus license uh, and you feel like using this open license is maybe not enough because it's just like, um, not, not, uh, it's not very time efficient. You can just like uh, tune off and just use open DNS uh, or this file related uh, domain filter uh, or for instance, uh, just your internal whitelists, blacklist or some other APIs that you would feel like integrating in, into it. Uh, this recommendation step, it can sort of also uh, get influenced by that. So like there is no magic into it. It just like looks at this different like suspicious uh, items uh, found from these different APIs or your internal sources and and highlights uh, basically the, the things that you should block. So I wouldn't say this is the only thing that we do. Like it obviously also requires some sort of automation uh, or some sort of manual step after running all this automation um, part, but it can give you a clear indication of like which which parts of the systems were, were suspicious or not. So yeah, this is sort of, let's say, all this, all this path. And it, as I said, like you can run it either separately or uh, run all this like one analyze uh, filter that do like automagic thing of like uh, 
querying all the APIs and all different uh, all different internal uh, sources of information that you that you feed them into it. Uh, what we also done with the uh, let's say as a, as a sort of like side work from uh, from this project, especially as like output filters and uh, querying all these different APIs was uh, the thread Intel API, which we also open sourced. Uh, this is basically one of the dependency of this of this output filters project. So basically, uh, you can now uh, have some sort of like Pythonic way of calling uh, virus total OpenDNS. Actually, OpenDNS already provided quite nice uh, library to call their uh, endpoints. Um, also, Shadow Server. So uh, Shadow Server is sort of like uh, this whitelist approach where they basically, based on the hash, uh, try to tell you whether this is uh, legitimate file or, or something that uh, they don't have information about. So it's just like a Python library to call those uh, different endpoints. So if you have the uh, uh, invest open DNS investigate API, it would, this will allow you, for instance, to, to query against like set of domains. Um, we, as I was mentioning before, we sort of like enrich it with this cache mechanism. It's very simple. Uh, I think it could be a bit more clever in the future. Uh, so if you have any ideas, feel free to, to suggest something on, on uh, GitHub or uh, if you have some sort of like uh, um, already something in mind, just, just shout out. Um, because currently it's just like uh, caches the existing response. It doesn't have any, let's say, um, timeout rate uh, for, for, for existing entries. So I can imagine that for something like IP address or a domain, uh, this course uh, pulled from OpenDNS that they will change over time. So it might make sense to have a bit cle more clever cache mechanisms that just like caching the, the existing response. But if you, if you run quite often, I would imagine um, there is not so much uh, of, a, of a fear that like your responses won't be, but won't be that ac accurate. Like in the worst case, you can just like delete this cache file and it will like try to pull the fresh. Uh, fresh entries again and again. And uh, we use this thread into library not only for the, uh, for the OSX collector project, we uh, also, uh, one of my colleagues, Quentin, he uh, wrote a tool called Elasticsearch, which is sort of like a way to alert out of uh, Elasticsearch data. Uh, so it's sort of very nice way of not only uh, doing a like, simple alert, pulling all this information from an Elasticsearch cluster, but also like you can, with just calling this thread into the library, you can just uh, grab, for instance, like file hashes from the, from the Elasticsearch entries and already call VirusTotal uh, to have in your alert some uh, more information about whether this is something suspicious or not. Uh, so we sort of find that like the, it, it's very easy to reuse it among different projects we do. Um, if you have something like uh, some incidents that you store in Elasticsearch and then you have some alerts out of that, you can just like, uh, while alerting, you can uh, pull more information like from, from uh, virus open OpenDNS shadow server, uh, put them there with the links, um, put some more intelligence into it, I would say, like for instance, this threshold, um, apply some sort of way of, of uh, filtering the alerts that are sort of uh, maybe not that critical or could be, um, could be something that requires more manual attention around. So if you're interested in, in that, uh, go read our engineering blog. Actually, I think it was posted yesterday or two days ago. Uh, so it's, it should be one of the first article that uh, on top of the list. And yeah, I think with that, like, yeah, if you have any ideas, any, any questions, like, you, you can either like grab me here or uh, start some discussion on GitHub. Um, please send pull requests if you have already something in mind and already want to like code around the project. And yeah, if you have any questions, just we can probably chat around here. Thanks. Hey, um, can you run OS Collector across all environment in a kind of 
uh, client server architecture or something. So yeah, so um, maybe I, I forgot to mention at the very beginning, this is something that we sort of run post-incident. So when some bad thing already happened on the machine, I believe for something like more um, um, client server architecture, uh, which requires internet connection, as I said, like we, we usually take the machine off the network when some incident happened. Uh, we, we do uh, have OS query for more, the, more of the like reactive information about the system. So I guess there are a couple of workshops here. So you probably <laughs> have like... <laughs> okay, sorry, I just missed that yeah. part when mm -hmm. you say that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Any more questions? All right. No. All right. Thank you, Kuda. Thanks.